Just so you guys know, this guy sold the first $100 million house ever. Michael Jackson's house, Michael Jordan's house. If you know somebody probably pretty famous, Moe's probably had something to do with a real estate deal. <laughs> you got the two TV shows, you got the book coming out, your company's exploded the last decade. You've built this explosive brand and company. You're pretty heavy on the work part right now. I always say, um, when it rains, catch as much water as you can because there's going to be a drought. If we didn't have the real house at Beverly Hills, I mean, I probably wouldn't have buying Beverly Hills. It's all of those things that lead to circumstance. And when that door opens, do you walk into that door and take advantage of that door? Yeah. Or do you stay looking, you know, at the room yeah. and try to figure out if you should go walk in that room? I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is that procrastination. Yeah. Yeah. What's inside that room? What does it look like? By the time you figure it out, it's closed. You're so... <laughs> Man, that's really true. <laughs> I sell the Playboy Mansion, $100 million deal, multi-million dollar commission. I'm in the next day in the office. Five of my salesmen come up to me. They're like, congratulations, but what are you doing here? And I'm just thinking to myself, well, like, well, where else would I be? They're like, well, why aren't you on vacation? I'm like, because this deal ended. What's next? What am I tomorrow? What am I three months from now? What am I seven months from now, right? And that's what people don't understand. So when you're planting those seeds, when you're staying in touch, mm -hmm. you're staying in touch for the future. Yes. For the next thing. Yes. Right? Are you getting into a business that you're passionate about? And if you're not, and it just happens to be the business that you're getting into, then find the passion in the business. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm excited because a really good friend of mine's here today, and uh, he's the sexiest man in the world and the most charismatic <laughs> man that I've ever met in my life. He's also, though, um, probably the number one real estate brand on the planet right now. And so you would probably know him from his company, The Agency. You may also know him from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. He and his wife, Kyle Richards, are sort of the OGs of that show right now. He's also got a new show out on Netflix right now. What's the name of that show? Called Buying Beverly Hills. Buying Beverly Hills. And so if you have ever watched that show, you recognize that beautiful voice of my friend Mauricio Yamansky. Welcome, Mo. Ed, how are you? It's so good to be here with you. We've been talking about this for a long, long time. I, know. I think the timing's better now because the book's out, right? And that's Way sort of the now. intro. He has a new book out called The Deal Maker: How to Succeed in Business and Life Through Dedication, Determination, and Disruption. He's highly qualified to write this book. So let's talk a little bit about all the stuff in there, okay? Because it's like it's a very detailed book, brother. There's a lot of details. There's a lot of stories. You know, yeah. and one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of teach what I've learned, mm -hmm. but through storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lot of the books that you read, it's like it's very um, – you know, like, do this, do that. Like, I didn't want to tell people what to do. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to think about my stories, what I did. Yeah. And then how does that relate to that person? And then how can they learn, right? Yeah. I mean, I've learned so much from you, Ed, but it's like, you know. Well, I've learned a lot from you, too. And one of the things, here's why I like that you finally wrote a book. Because I've been telling them to do this for a while. It's like, write yeah. the book, man, write the book. It's because a lot of people that write books, and I don't mean this disrespect to anybody, they haven't actually done what they say they do in their books. Like, you actually have produced evidence and success through the stuff that's actually in the book. And some of it's like, you're right, there's all stories in it. A couple I can't wait to talk about today. <laughs> But, like, there's even, like, some basic principles. But, like, even for me, I've read every dang book on personal development or business probably on the planet. But, like, even in the very beginning of the book, I think it's your grandfather told you about, like, is it your grandfather or your dad where you're like, hey, there's eight, there's 24 Balance. hours in a day. Yeah, yeah there's, like, eight hours. I'll let you say it, but there's eight, eight, and eight. What yeah. are the eights? 24 hours in a day. Yep. Eight hours for work, eight hours for family, mm -hmm. free time, whatever that means, mm -hmm. and eight hours for sleeping. Yeah. But right. you do that really well. Well, and I've learned it young from my grandfather, right? It's, it's all about balance, you know? And I, I talk about it in my book, you know, one of the things that, you know, you take from one, like, you got to sleep, right? right. Like, right. The, the body just needs to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's seven or eight or nine or whatever, but the body needs to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. You can't take that away from yourself in order to have sustainability, long life, longevity, and to be able to be, you know, on it, right? Right. Um, but... And then you got to, and you, and you know, fortunately or unfortunately, for some of us, unfortunately, we have to work, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, I mean, like, that's just part of our lives, right? Um, so then it's those eight hours of play mm -hmm. that you got to figure out how to balance the most, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if you're borrowing from those hours to work, mm -hmm. you know, then something's got to give in those eight hours for play, yeah. right? And then you got to decide what's the most important thing for you, right? Is it your family? Mm -hmm. Is it playtime? Mm -hmm. Is it friends? Right, because you can't do it all if those hours become shorter, right? right? And one of the things that I've talked to some of my best friends and mm -hmm. one of the 
sacrifices I've had in my life, you know, in growing the business and having to work because I didn't have money, you know, mm-hmm. any money at one point in my life was that I, I sacrificed friends, yeah. right? Like I had the family. Mm-hmm. I did not sacrifice family. Mm-hmm. I did not sacrifice my wife, my mm-hmm. kids, my girls. I did not sacrifice that. Mm-hmm. Um, I sacrificed friends. And, and, you know, you look back in time and it's like, I feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't change it. It was the right decision, right? Even though I feel bad about it, I don't think most people realize that probably something does give. By the way, same for me, the exact same thing. I just said this today to somebody earlier in the day. Like that's probably the thing. The last decade, I've maintained friendships, but they haven't gone as deep as they probably otherwise could have. I've actually though watched you in different seasons too. Like I feel like right now, maybe you're on the work part a little heavier than even before when I knew you. Is there some validity with the, you got the two TV shows, you got the book coming out, you got your company's exploded the last decade. You've built this explosive brand and company. You're pretty heavy on the work part right now. I am very heavy on the work part right now. Why? Do you have to consciously choose that? Or is it like the season of your life? Like I'm gonna get it when it's good because I'm at a certain age or? It's the season of my life, right? Like the the, the business right now is, 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 is in that moment of explosion, right? Like, and you've got to, I always say, you know, um, when it rains, catch as much water as you can because there's going to be a drought, mm. right? <laughs> um, and so right now, that the business is just it's a, it's in an it's in an opportunity where it, there's an opportunity to explode. The brand recognition is you know crazy. Um, Kyle is doing a you know she's at her peak in her career, yeah. uh, you know. So that's allowed us also to give you know the family more, right? Like mm. because of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and because of Alex Baskin and all of those people, like. We have a show, you know, called Buying Beverly Hills, right? Like, if we didn't have the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I mean, I probably wouldn't have Buying Beverly Hills. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe not, right? But it's all of those things that lead to circumstance. And when that door opens, Mm -hmm. and you talk about this all the time, right? Like, when that door opens, do you walk into that door and take advantage of that door, or do you stay looking, you know, Mm -hmm. at the room and try to figure out, you know, if you should go walk in that room? I think a lot of people don't walk in the room because they think they have to know everything before they walk in there. Don't you? I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is that yeah. procrastination. Yeah. What's inside that room? What does it look like? By the time you figure it out, it's closed. You're so <laughs> Man, that's really true. The window or the door closes if you flinch, right? Like you got to be able to step into the unknown a little bit. I said this about you when I introduced you. I wasn't being funny. You are the most charismatic friend that I have. And you and I have a lot of really well-known, very influential friends, famous friends. But of all of them, if you said to the word to me, charisma, um, persuasion, whatever that thing is. I'm, I'm serious, Mo. You are the most charismatic friend. We've both got a lot of them. I love you for that, man. It's, and coming from you, that's, that means the world. Thank you. It's really true, though. And I wonder, in the book, you actually, you don't use the word charisma, but you kind of break it down by influence. I'm, I think a lot of this you kind of have, right? You got, but you talk about in the book, you're like, everyone's a VIP, right? Listen, there's these things that I don't care if we're at a social function or we've been at a golf tournament together. We're down in Mexico together. We've been at a business meeting, one of your business events. You have this amazing ability. I don't know if it's that the person in front of you is like the most important person in the world at that time, but what is this charisma thing you do so well? It's innate, Mm -hmm. you know, I think, and, uh, and I think, you know, and I talk about it in my book. I think that the fact that I was born with a you know, terminal blood disease that I survived. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that I was the oldest, like mm-hmm. the circumstances that make us as people, right? Mm-hmm. Like you get things that well, good and bad, mm-hmm. right? And then we have the power of the mind to change that or to accept it and make ourselves better, right? Mm-hmm. But because I was born with all those things and because I was the first um, child and the first grandchild, I had a lot of love. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that my parents did really well is they gave, they made me feel so good and so confident and mm-hmm. just about everything I did mm-hmm. um, that I was born with an innate confidence in myself. Interesting. And then it was taking that confidence. And, you know, when you have confidence, mm-hmm. you, you have charisma. I mean, not always. Yeah. But you're right, if you have though. confidence, you yeah. have charisma. Yeah. Right? Are you ever intimidated when you're in a room? I mean, you so, just so you guys know, this guy sold the first $100 million house ever. Michael Jackson's house, Michael Jordan's house. If you know somebody probably pretty famous, Moe's probably had something to do with a real estate deal. with the <laughs> Do you ever? Because I, mean, I think a lot of people are like, i got to walk into this board meeting. I'm intimidated. I've got a sales call with this client. I'm intimidated. Even your agents that work for you, I'm sure there's – have you ever had that or is it that confidence that 
Uh, is it? For, I know who I am. I'm loved. I believe in myself. And no, I, it's. Uh, I'm definitely been intimidated, and I've been intimidated walking into meetings, and I've had fear making a call when I have to deliver bad news, and everything that everybody feels I've had, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not resilient to that. There's no mm-hmm. innateness in that, but you know, you've taught me and mm-hmm. and and a lot about that, and it's all about the power of the mind, right? Mm-hmm. And you can change that, mm-hmm. right? And and so I can tell you that you know my morning routine when I'm getting ready to do something, um, you know. Whatever it is that I'm going to do, like today, I'm going to be on your show. Like right. that's, that's, that's that's such an exciting and amazing thing for me. I could not be more excited. So, I woke up this morning. I had a lot to do this morning. I woke up a little extra this morning. Mm-hmm. I gave I, I I skipped my workout, mm-hmm. but I did and I did my meditation right because okay, I didn't have enough time right. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to accomplish today with you on the mm-hmm. show right? Awesome. And so you can work through your mind mm-hmm. right to make sure that when you're in a situation, yes. You you deliver right, yes. and so, I mean, I you know I had a, a story one time when I was uh, I, I was showing a property to the Emir of Qatar, right? Like, oh and the Emir of Qatar arrived, and I had no idea. I really didn't know who was arriving. I mean, I kind of knew it was a big deal, but Ed, <laughs> eight police uh, motorcycles, oh eight, you know, six police cars. Seven SU black SUVs, like, really? Really? and boom, you know, like the Emir of Qatar is there looking at the house, right? Oh and I was like, okay. And the security, this, uh, the security service would not let me near him, right? And these guys, these guys were all, you know, six six giants, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, there wasn't one small guy oh my there, gosh. right? So I'm sitting there in the room, and I'm I, I'm trying to, you know, show the Emir, you know, the house, and but the guys wouldn't like let me be you know near him so mm. i felt like i was talking through walls right like mm. you know jumping up and down you know trying to get you it's know hard to make a connection to, to the connection right? <laughs> right so finally after like two rooms that i'm showing the house i say to the emir i go sir i go you know are you enjoying the house would you like me to show you the house i mean mm. you know or or, or not I, he goes yeah so far i like it you know a lot mm. i go okay would you mind asking your Did. secret service, you know, to to <laughs> give me some space so that I can really? actually like he show did. you and sell you the house? And he loved that, right? He did. Like, he did. And so it's that confidence that allows mm. you to break that barrier. Interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Do you? I am picturing you doing that, and like, just so you know, he's perfectly suited to do this. You guys, just absolutely perfectly suited. Is there a? I'm going to go into all kind of stuff in the book. There's this because I want to talk about a couple of stories too, but. Is there something that you do better than anyone in terms of um, like that process of closing and persuading? When you're showing a home, for example, are you you trying to project them? You, you say something in the book about creating an emotional moment. This is like brilliant, by the way. Are you conscious of that? Like, is that because you put it in the book, right? Yeah. What do you mean when you say that? Yeah, I'm definitely conscious of that. And I think, you know, in terms of like, what do I do better than most? You know, I don't, I don't know if I do anything better than everyone. I think, every, like, you know, right. um, I think people are geniuses and mm-hmm. there's amazing people that do extraordinary things. But one of the things that I do best is is what I call reading the room. Mm-hmm. You have it in the book, yeah. Right? Explain that. And, you know, what that means is really just understanding your audience, mm-hmm. right? And when you're understanding your audience... Um, and you can understand their emotions and you can look at them and you can actually read, you know, what's going through their ma- brain, yep. then that gives you the opportunity to create an emotional moment, God. right? Mm. And so when you create an emotional moment, so good, that's no. when you can make a sale, mm. right? Like that's when you can, you know, mm. get somebody. Mm. But again, that doesn't happen by accident. It has to happen by, by you have to make it happen, right? So, mm. you know, one of the things that I do uh, before I show a property or I'm going to have a meeting is I go on somebody's LinkedIn, I go on their bio. Mm-hmm. I understand who I'm, my audience is, yeah. right? Um, are they philanthropists? Mm-hmm. Are they male chauvinists? I mean, like, yeah. what are what is this human being that's in front of me, right? Yeah. Like, um, do they have kids? Do they have dogs? Do they have horses? Do they like golf? Like, what's going on mm-hmm. with these people mm-hmm. before I have that meeting? Now I've got background, mm-hmm. right? Now I'm in the room. Mm-hmm. I am not automatically showing off that I have background on them. I'm not giving them the fact to them to know that I have background on them. I'm just, you know, now talking to you, okay. right? Okay. I'm showing you the house. I'm talking to you. I'm getting to know you, okay. right? But the leading questions that I'm asking you are so prepared mm-hmm. because I already know a little bit about you, okay. right? If I know you like horses, mm-hmm. right, I'm not asking you, you know, if you like giraffes, right? <laughs> right? Yes. My yes. questions start becoming around equestrian to get you to open up about, you know. Something you already know about Something them. I already know you love, yeah, right? Good. Now I break the barrier, Mm. right? I start eventually breaking down that barrier and creating a moment between you and I, right? And that's what I call those emotional moments. They can be physical, Mm -hmm. right? Which is just, 
setting up, you know, the senses, you know, the house, the smell, mm-hmm. um, the the beautiful flowers, you know, whatever the physicality is, you yeah. know, those senses, or it could be the emotional moment. Mm. right and get to somebody you know in that way and that's when it can become really powerful mo that's so good <laughs> i'm sitting there thinking man that's really really good in every single industry because we said about confidence earlier confidence comes from preparation and so maybe if someone's listening they go, i don't have that natural confidence that i wasn't raised like mo was raised that preparation really can give you confidence for whatever the meeting is you're about to go into and i want to unpack that the other thing too is that most people don't do the preparation, so they don't have that. And then they reverse. I just thought about something because I've watched people do this, even that have sold me things. They've done the preparation, and then they feel this need to let me know they've done it, and then it loses the connection. 100%. I've done my background on you, sir. And I'm like, they think that impresses you, but then it's, it robs us of the emotional moment because you can't ask these questions because now I think you're kind of reading off cue cards almost. Really good. Yeah. You, you do not need to let your client or your you know the person you're trying to – it, 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 it it is one of the beautiful things that I wrote, you know, I, I'm in real estate. Right. And so I talk about houses and real estate stories and residential and some of the most expensive real estate in the world, right? Mm-hmm. But that's given me the opportunity to meet some of the most influential people in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not only about, it's not about real estate. It's about life. Mm-hmm. And it's about professions. And it's about, and, and you know, it doesn't matter if you're in the service industry. Mm-hmm. You know, I say that all the time. I mean, you know, for somebody like you and I, how easy would it be for a hotel to just, you know... Find out what your favorite tequila is, right? Oh, or if you like tequila or if you like vodka. Like, yep. that'd be pretty easy, yes. right? It's not that hard to yep. figure that out today, yep. right? right? Even if they send a questionnaire, mm-hmm. right? And they, even if it's not, they're not using extra stuff. Yep. But how much better would your experience be if you arrived at a hotel and they handed you your favorite drink, right? They handed you, you know, they had the right smell, mm-hmm. what you know, whatever it is in your room mm-hmm. that you were paying a fortune for at that hotel or, yeah. or, or even, you know, not a fortune, you mm-hmm. know, a, a moderate hotel. Yeah. It's not that hard to give you a little bit of an extra experience, but nobody does it. It's it so doesn't true. exist. Very good. And it really wouldn't be very difficult. See, now you're getting in the minds and the strategies of the elite of the elite at what they do because you're a billion percent right. It made, you, just, you just made me flash to the – three or four experiences recently I've had where they did do that and it's I'm going back there I'm patronizing that business again I'm going to be a repeat customer you're a hun- and I've told people about it so I've shared the business I've done their marketing for them when you do these little things this is the the nuanced stuff the other thing though is you got to have some guts I knew this story about that you when you worked for the Hiltons which is in Kyle's family and your family but you tell this amazing story in the book. I think there's a lot of people sitting there right now, brother, that are like, I have this dream. I want to pursue it, but I'm afraid to leave where I am. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of risk. There's um, fear. I also don't want to let down someone who's been pretty good to me or whatever. They have all these things they do. And so I knew the nature of your story of how the agency got started. But most people don't. Mm-hmm. And so, And it really... It's a lesson on what to do and what not to do, mm-hmm. on a lesson to do on your side, and maybe when you're leading somebody, what not to do. And I've told you before we got I said, I'm kind of surprised you put this in the book because <laughs> it's a, this is a book of stuff, man. This book is legit. And so take them through your, we're going to start in real estate, even though there was business before this. Tell them who you worked for, why it matters who it was, and then what ended up happening that finally helped you give birth to this dream that now everybody knows you from. Yeah, well, you know, one of the important things and that I always talk about and kind of where the original concept of my book comes from is that when doors close, you have the ability to create another open one mm-hmm. right like and, and so it's like boom something closes on you mm-hmm. you know i got fired from a job like boom i got into real estate mm-hmm. right like um instead of going and in, in and you know going into a uh, a hole yeah. and not coming out it's yeah. like i use that getting fired from one industry from the fashion and going into real estate mm-hmm. right so cut to you know i'm in real estate now i got my real estate license um i'm working for uh, i get a job working for my brother-in-law for rick hilton um, at, at Hilton and Highland, one of the best firms in the world. And I still think, you know, from a luxury perspective, it's, um, you know, it, it was one of the best firms mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's broken up recently. Right. Um, and so unfortunately, it's just not there. But I can tell you that during the history, hard to beat that. Okay. Okay. Um, and, you know, they gave me an opportunity. They opened up a door. They gave me an opportunity to work. 
Um, I nailed it. I kicked some ass. I, you know, ultimately became their number one salesperson. Mm-hmm. Um, I ultimately became, uh, I was responsible at one point for 20% of their business. They had a hundred agents. Uh, they did a billion dollars that year. And I, you know, personally did, you know, 200 million, you know, 193 of it, right? Like 19.3% of their business. Um, and, um, and I went to Rick, you're right, and who was my brother-in-law. And I, uh, I basically, and you know, again, I want to make sure that everybody's super clear. This is a story of just life, and it's not. I am not ragging on him. They gave me amazing opportunities, and they gave me stuff to do. It's just, and the reason I chose to tell the story is just because it's just real and it's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. And if it didn't happen like this, I just wouldn't have opened the agency. I wouldn't be where I am today. And in a way, I'm thankful it happened like this. So this is not a negative thing. I'm not dissing, okay? I want to be super clear. Like, it's just the way life works that allows you to make certain decisions that I probably wouldn't have made had it not gone down this way, right? Right. So I'm I'm 20% of their business, and I say to Rick, I say, Rick, I really want to, I want to help you grow, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, Paris was the hottest star on the planet. Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton. Right. Hottest star on the planet, right? Who's your niece? Who's my niece? Right. And so I said to Rick, I said, Rick, you got to take advantage right now of your name. Mm-hmm. I go, let's dump the Highland name. Mm-hmm. Jeff Highland will still be your partner. I'm right. not saying don't dump Jeff. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's right. your partner. Like, right. dump the Highland name. Mm-hmm. Make it Hilton Real Estate. Yeah. Um, let me help you grow it. And let's go franchise Hilton Real Estate all around the world, That's right? Idea. And let me help you grow, which is in essence the playbook for the agency, I know. right? right. Uh, <laughs> um, and I go, let's go do that, right? He goes, well, you know, I don't really want to do that. You know, we're a boutique firm, we're a luxury firm. I never want to be bigger than that. Which, by the way. Kudos. Sure. Amazing for him. Mm-hmm. Love that. And that's why I think it's one of the best, was one of the best brands because they stuck to who they were. Sure. Okay. So amazing brand. They stick to who they are. He go. I said, okay, I get that, but I really want to help you grow. And I want to like, I want, you know, like you're in New York, you're not working that hard. Like, let me be your partner. Mm-hmm. Right. And let me be your boots on the ground. I'm 20% of your business. And so he said, yes, no problem. I'll let you do that. Um, but I don't want you to get, you know, into our books. And I don't want you to, like, you know, get into that whole world. So, you know, rather than making you an equity partner, I'm just going to give you a percentage of, of uh, profit pro- of, of gross sales. Yeah, gross. Right? And so he offers me a percentage of gross sales. And I accept. And probably less than I would have wanted to. But I accepted because I just wanted, at that point, the recognition. Okay. Right, like it was more Great about point. like Great point. I'm busting yeah. my ass. Mm-hmm. I really just want the recognition. I'm 20 percent of your company, yeah. um, you know, and and you're not that present, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I mean, like right. it's the reality, right? So he says, "Fine, mm-hmm. no problem." I say, "Fine, no problem." I accept the deal. We put a little term sheet together. We do a deal term sheet. We go forward. You know, families. We don't go into heavy, you know, legal. Just a term yeah. sheet, right? Boom, we go forward. Well, the next year, you know, 18 months later, the next year, recession. 2008, crash, recession. In the meantime, I had the best year of my life. I mm-hmm. kept growing because mm-hmm. I took advantage of the recession and mm-hmm. I took advantage of, you know, double yep. downing and, yep. you know, being a contrarian. I kept growing. I had an extraordinary year. Mm-hmm. And I get a phone call from Rick and, and he says, hey, you know, it's a recession. We're not making any money. We actually lost money. It's really unfair if I'm paying you money. Um, and you know, and I'm not earning any money. Right. And I, great time for me. I said, you know, I said to him, well, Rick, you know, no problem. I totally get it. I go take the, what you owe me and, uh, make me a partner in the ups and the downs. Right. Give me, equity. me an equity partner. Give me the equity. I'm in like when yeah. we lose, we lose together. When we win, we win, <laughs> win together. together. Like right. that's what I want. Right. 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 And so the answer was no. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and you know, rather than fighting it and rather than going after, you know, him, you know, because the family is more important than business. Mm-hmm. Okay. And my, my, my wife's family, her sister, her nieces mean everything to her. And I did not want to get in the way of that. Mm-hmm. So I just let it be. I lost, you know, one of the lessons that we learned when we're really young in life mm-hmm. is that life's not always fair, That's right? Right, right? You go into your parents, mm-hmm. you you know you were right. Your parents didn't see the whole thing, and they just tell you, dude, you're in trouble. Go to your <laughs> room. Right, right. And you know what? Life's not fair. Right. <laughs> right? Right. You're in your room, right? right. Uh, so you got sent to your room. <laughs> so I got sent to my room. Life's not fair. Right. I accept it. Mm-hmm. It's not fair. Mm-hmm. 
but I'm not going to fight it. I'm mm-hmm. not going to fight for fair. I'm mm-hmm. going to just accept it, mm-hmm. right? But what did that do? Is that got me thinking, yeah. right? And I was an entrepreneur, and I wanted to do my own thing, and I wanted to put this business plan that I put in front of Rick, and I wanted to do it myself. Yeah. And thus, you know, the beginning and the birth of the agency, right? And that's, Boy. in essence, what, you know, the agency is. Do you, I, you all hearing this? I want to keep <laughs> going. But so a couple things. One, he got sent to his room, and what he did is he looked out the window and said, hey, maybe I could go build my own mansion, my own business. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two for me is, you know, that when you do have a rainmaker in your organization, when you do have somebody really making it go for you, make sure you take care of them, even in the good and the bad times, because ultimately if you don't, they can leave you. The third thing that's most important for all of you is the agency, which is to me the biggest real estate brand on the planet right now, the fastest growing agency in the world, was born in a recession. And so a lot of you that are out there going, this is the worst time to start a business or it's a difficult time, Everyone always says, well, so many great businesses were built during a recession. I'm sitting in front of a man who's built an iconic brand, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate sold that started during a recession, correct? That is 100% correct. Yeah, that's pretty (laughs) powerful. Anything on that you would add to the story or want to... being full circle. Yeah, no, I think you've nailed it. And, you know, again, the re- the, the the idea of building a business, mm-hmm. um, and it's not only about building a business, it's about building yourself, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, so for example, if you're in real estate mm-hmm. and you are a salesperson, mm-hmm. you're running your own business. You don't need to own a brokerage firm to build mm-hmm. and create your own amazing business, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, you know, there's an opportunity to go get more listings and an opportunity to go get all this. All of that can happen during a recession, mm-hmm. right? Because people, when everything is amazing, people don't want to change. Mm-hmm. Everything's amazing. Mm-hmm. When things are bad, you're open to change. You're right. Right? Why can't I sell this? Why can't I buy this? Why can't I, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm open to change. I'm willing to try new stuff. So the time to build is actually, into, it is during the, that's not necessarily the time you're going to make money. Hmm. Right, you're gonna, you're not gonna make necessarily make money in the recession. You're gonna build and gain market share in a recession. Wow. When you come out of the recession, is when you're gonna bring in all the money. Wow. That's one of my favorite things ever said on the show. Right there. No one has ever said that to me before. And that's a billion trillion percent exactly what happens. You're gaining market share, and then you collect the checks when the recession ends. Man, that's really good. You, 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 you are what you describe in the book. You used the word earlier. By the way, all of this is in the book, you guys. Okay, so you use the word, and this thinking that you just said is contrarian thinking. Okay, it's contrary to culture. It's contrary to popular opinion. To start the agency was a contrarian move. You actually have that as part of the work in the book called Be Contrarian. Yep. Does that mean don't always participate in group think like everybody does it and be constantly innovating? Because you also talk about that in the book, too. Uh, I think that's exactly what that means. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's think on you. It's think. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't follow. I remember, you know, another thing that my grandfather and my father always used to say to me. They used to say, "When everybody's buying, you sell. When everybody's selling, you buy." Interesting, right? Yeah. Like that's what a contrarian is. I do that, by the way. <laughs> I am always. I just put a post out about this, Mo, the other day. I'm like, when everyone is thinking one way, I try to always think the other. When they're all going one direction, like, no one makes money in the pack. Nobody no gains market share in the pack. Nobody gains a great life in the pack. I mean, it's like what we're dealing with right now, the First Republic Bank, right? right. Like, is it the time to buy? Right. <laughs> it's down 85%. I know. Right? I mean, it's like, a good bank. I'm mean, not going to be careful. It's a great like, bank. It's a pretty good bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm debating the same thing myself. I'm like, I kind of get what's happening. But I mean, man, that's contrarian thinking, right? Exactly. Like, you're not following everybody. Yeah. You, you know, I, I, By the way, I'm not telling anybody Me here to either. go buy. 100%. Like, <laughs> not at all. I should amend that good bank thing. It's a bank. I'll just leave it at that. It's a bank. I don't know if it's a good bank or not. Right. I got to be really, really careful about that. Do you, uh, do you think, by the way, I'm loving our conversation. It's really cool for me to have like this part of my friend that I see like revealed to me in detail, like the science behind the art, because, you know, I've always admired the things that you do and, and how you go about doing them. But now I understand the processes to which you do them. I want to go all the way back for a minute because it's one of my favorite stories in the book because you just said it. I think a lot of people that get into sales don't realize you you are self-employed, but you have to operate like you own your own business. You have to think like an entrepreneur. A lot of people do this. They have a full-time job. They work like 12, 14 hours a day. All of a sudden, they get to be an independent contractor of a job, and they think they're on vacation. They work, they work two, three hours a day. I'm like, no, when you do that, you actually have five jobs. You have 11 jobs. It's going to require more work, sheer momentum to get it off the ground. And you kind of caught that entrepreneurial bug, you call it in the book, 
young with this thing with your dad, right? This story. And I think this is illustrative of thinking like an entrepreneur. And it's one of my favorite stories in the entire book because it explains you to me and it explains a lot of your success to me. So tell us that. Another recession. My father came up to me and he said, you know, Mauricio, it's uh you know, it's time to it's time to either, you know, work or go to school. But, you know, I'm not gonna pay for you to be a dumbass anymore and, you know, like just pretend you're going to school, right? right? And I literally said to my dad, I go, Give me a couple of days and I'll get back to you and, you know, let you know what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And he was supportive of me going to school if, if I was gonna go to school, mm-hmm. right? I wasn't just wasn't supportive of me going to school if I was, you know, right gonna go to the bars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. Um and I uh I got back and I said, Dad, I- I'm gonna come work for you. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, he just taught me so many things, man. He taught me the value of the penny, right? Like, which is in my book, and you guys will love that. It's a great story. It really just makes everything so real, um, and it just teaches. You know, it, it helps you teach your kids, you know, how to save. It helps you th- teach yourself how to save and how to, you know, understand that value. Because you know, I always tell everybody, there's a hundred pennies in the dollar, mm-hmm. right? The day you can figure out how to give me a hundred and two, mm-hmm. I'm in. I'm your yeah. partner. Yeah. It says that in the book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Um, you know, we go through that whole process and he teaches me how to fight for cents, literally. Like I would, you know, I'd come back and I'd be like, dad, I sold, you know, a hundred thousand yards for 97 cents. And he'd be like, yeah, go back and get me 99 cents. I'm like, really? Like, (laughs) and yeah, you start adding that up and adding that up and it adds up to a lot of money. Money. Yeah. Right. Um, but then eventually it's like, you know, you, you're in sales, you're creating your own momentum, you're creating your own things. You get that entrepreneur bug, you know, and I ended up meeting, you know, somebody that we sold fabric to that was struggling and I loved their brand. It was 90265. It was a clothing line. The guy was awesome. His name's Bron Roylands. He started the company. Uh, really brilliant guy. Uh, he was actually a makeup artist. He used to do all the makeup artists for um, Justine Bateman and, uh, and, and Woody Harrelson. Oh, really? And he like had all these amazing people that were his, you know, his people. And, um, but, but, you know, they didn't have credit. It was a startup, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm think, sitting there in front of these guys, and I'm thinking to myself, well, these are the fabrics I sell. Like, I have, I've got all of this shit, mm-hmm. you know, sitting in my warehouse. Like, like right? Yeah. So now you start thinking as an entrepreneur, and you start taking your salesman job into this next piece, which is like, how do I build a business, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so from there, we built a business, right? And we built something else, you know, so. And there was an exit out of it too, right? And there, yeah, yeah, there was an exit. We sold it. It was not a, it was not a profitable exit for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. It was more of an exit that got me out. Um, and I paid all my debt and I paid all my people and I walked away with it. Yeah. Um, but, but, but yeah, <laughs> but it was a great learning lesson. What is, what is, uh, <laughs> let's talk about your public you for a minute. What has that been like for you to go from a guy who's, you know, a guy working every single day to now there's this like unprecedented notoriety in your life, right? Like Kyle's the most well-known housewife, I think is probably to say. On, on the, I would say by far. By far, by, and the most well-known franchise. And then obviously that's transcended over and doesn't hurt you in building your brand either. But... I wonder what impact that's made on you, your family, your life, the good and the bad of it. What comes with that? There's both. There's tremendous sacrifices that are made. What are, Um, like what? You know, and there's obviously the good, Mm -hmm. right? Um, The sacrifices are, uh, you know, I mean, is it nice to be able to go in and, uh, and call and get a reservation at, you know, a restaurant that most people can't, you know, Mm -hmm. get a reservation? Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. You know, but now you walk in and, you know, there's also a thousand Mm -hmm cameras on you yeah right yeah and you're in the public eye and mm-hmm. people are you know talking about you and making mm-hmm. stuff up about you mm-hmm. and all kinds of different you know mm-hmm. things you know mm-hmm. it's like i mean having you know to me having uh, that was definitely a sacrifice i made that that the privacy of life the being just just being private being you know um and i don't know how else to say it it's like literally just being private yeah right I know, like i know what you mean um yeah. Yeah. it's 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 amazing right mm-hmm. and you and, and so many people want to be publicly known yeah. and they want the notoriety and they want the celebrity status and all of those things but you know people don't realize what a huge sacrifice comes with that yeah and um and it's not necessarily bad. It also brings money. Right. The benefits of building a the, brand, the all those benefits, other things. Right? I have made it very clear. And I, you know, if it wasn't for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, uh, if it wasn't for television, if it was, like, I, I think we would have still grown. I think mm-hmm. we'd still have an amazing business, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, before I ever got on television, I was already the number one agent in, the, in, yep. in, in California. Yep. But there was no way I would have built the business I had as fast as I have 
mm-hmm. without television. And you talk about that. So building a network and building a brand. Maybe you're not going to be on the Real Housewives of whatever, but I think business has become not just about who you know anymore, but about who knows you. And that's why social media does matter and why building a brand for any entrepreneur out there, I believe there's value to. Do you do you agree with that? A hundred percent. And you nailed it. You don't need television to build the brand. Right. right <laughs> I mean, right, like, right. Uh, let's be clear. It certainly helps. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, it gets it out there, but not everybody, you know, there's not, you know, 10 there's million so many shows seats. or right, 100 exactly. million shows, right? right? Like, right. there's only so many seats out yep. there, as you said. Mm-hmm. And, um, but you can, I've seen amazing brands built, you know, mm-hmm. by, by, you know, with other methodology yeah but by by building social media by building referral bases by but you talk about that and having a network like because you also say in the book and i just think this is brilliant stuff this is just stuff people don't do in friendships like one thing i try to do even with you or other friends of mine just time the time and just go hey man i'm thinking about you i love you you okay you yeah. need anything right and what there's a principle of this in the book for business too i want you to stay on this point which is to stay in touch because this is you're not most people in sales or in their career think that they're building for like just this year. They don't think that they're building a company. So you're planting seeds often right now that you won't even harvest to get a client or a referral three, four, five years from now. So talk about that. Hundred yeah. percent, and it's uh, it's so important. Like you know, I have approximately two thousand salespeople that work for me right now. And I get to see the way they act all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You see the guy that makes the five million dollar sale to make a hundred grand, and mm-hmm. you know, they're off to Cabo. Yes, boom, yes. right? Yes. Like, dang it, yes. Bye. Yes. Like, where are you going? I'm off to Cabo. Yep. I'm like, dude, yes. you finally made some money. <laughs> right. Okay, get like, the momentum going. get it going on. Right. Like, you yes. know, and then it's like, you know, and then it's, you know, I'll use me, right, as as as, as a real concrete situation. You know, I sell the Playboy Mansion. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hundred million dollar deal, Gosh. right? Multi million dollar commission. Yep. Um, I'm in the next day in the office, yes. And like five people come up to me, five of my salesmen come up to me. They like congratulations, but what are you doing here? Right. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, like, well, where else would I be? I mean, like, right. you know, they're like, well, why aren't you on vacation? I'm like, cause this deal ended. What's next? I can't rebring this deal back, right? Like, it's gone. It's not gonna. Mm-hmm. So what am I? tomorrow what am i three months from now what am i seven months from now right yes. and, and as soon as that ends it ends yes right yes and that's what these that's what people don't understand so when you're planting those seeds when you're staying in touch mm-hmm. you're staying in touch for the future yes for the next thing yes right why is it that people don't get this like it's this unbelievable is, it's, it's to the me. big <laughs> separator now we're going into it guys this is a big old separator here's what i think happens you actually say it in the book that's why like I told you, you said, did you get my book? I said, dude, I read it this weekend. I read your entire book in two days, and I know you. So I know a lot of the stories <laughs> in the book, right? But it's this good. So I'm like, yes, damn it, scream this. And one of the things you say is, like, don't believe your press clippings. Like, don't believe the hype about you. Here's what happens to most people. They get a little bit of success, and then they start believing the crap about them. Like, oh, I can do this whenever I want, or this is am- I actually, I, this is probably, because I don't think you do it the way I do it, but I play a little scared. Like, I, I don't, you're so confident. I don't think you have, but like, it's similar. And if I play a little scared. Like, when I get a good deal or something good's happened, I've had an exit or, you know, this show's doing really well. I'm like, okay, I got to do something to keep it going or do it better. I don't go, yay, I'm the greatest podcast host in the world. It'll just <laughs> grow on its own now. Yeah. But that's what a lot of, you must see your salespeople all the time. Like, they believe the hype or, even recognition. I was at your event. I was the speaker at your event. The best thing you do in your culture is how much you love on your people and they have a good time and you recognize them. I do that really well in my companies, yep. too. It's a double-edged sword sometimes, though. Because, yep. <laughs> one, you're saying, you're amazing, you're great. And a lot of people are like, yeah, I sure am. I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> and they live off last year's production or reward for the next two years. And they wake up, they're like, wow, I can't get a deal done. I lost my mojo. Because they believe the hype. Yep. The seeds you plant today are for tomorrow, not for today, right? Mm-hmm. And it's uh, you're so right, Ed. And... Um, you know, one of the things that I just keep thinking about is, you know, you and I are, are, are so similar mm-hmm. uh, in, in different ways. Yeah. Right? right. Yep. Similar and, di- and different. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you and I, you know, when you invited me to play the member guest at, you know, the Madison, mm-hmm. and you and I are just these competitive yes. son of a gun. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, we didn't win, by the way. We didn't win. <laughs> the, that <laughs> damn ball, that last that punch last just punch hit, hit the, the damn pin. Cup. Dang it. I'm still pissed. Anyway. Uh, but, but, but it was, the, you know, and then golf is a game of life. We always right. talk about it, right? Yeah. But you and I are in there and we're like you know 
when I'm hitting a bad shot, like you're, you know, you're you're making me feel like it's okay to hit the bad shot. And when yeah. you're hitting, and when you're not, yeah. you know, super on, I'm making you feel like, you know, and yes. I'm pumping you up because I know how good you're going to hit that next shot, and you're pumping me up because yep. you know how that, yep. you know, and it's that whole thing, right? Yep. That's what we have to do with our with our with our with our people. Yes, right? exactly. That's the, and that is the the the, the life that the we life. have to create. Are you good you know, at that? Like making people feel good about themselves, making them feel that you believe in them, you pour I, belief into them. I think I'm pretty good at that. Mm-hmm. I think that that's one of those things that we can always be better and can always continue to work on because, mm-hmm. you know, um, it goes back to time and it goes back to the balance of time. Like mm-hmm. I could be great at it, but if I don't have time and I don't put the effort, I suck. Yeah, you know, the <laughs> right. you know the other thing you're good at doing is um by the way guys, we're covering a lot of stuff on a short window here. I'm loving this conversation. But you the other thing you do is you have surrounded yourself with people who are good at the stuff you aren't good at doing. One of the most important things to do. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit because I don't think a lot of entrepreneurs do it. They're like I'm going to do everything. They micro micromanage every single little thing or they deplete their energy doing stuff they're not really that good at and don't have a proclivity for, and then they don't have the energy and juice to go do the things that really move the needle in their business. You are really good at moving the needle in your business because you don't deplete your energy most of the time doing stuff you're not good at or don't enjoy. I think one of the most important traits that a person can have, a business person, uh, a person in anything, is being able to really self um, and self-analyze yes. your strengths and weaknesses mm-hmm. and not trick yourself that you have strengths where you have weaknesses and not, tr- you know, because yeah, most true. people, yeah. they trick themselves. That's that it, 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 it. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes I see in people is that they trick themselves. They think they're good. They pretend they're good at something or they think they're good at something that they kind of suck at. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And being able, able to be self-analytical and understand your weaknesses yep. Is probably the most important thing because then you can hire to your weaknesses. Yes. Right. And I hire uh, to my weaknesses, and I also hire what I think is amazing brains that don't necessarily think like me. I don't need another human being next to me that thinks exactly the way I think, so that we could be all day long. Hey, bud, are we? F- great mm. we're the best yeah mm. yeah let's do it red yeah mm. red red you know like <laughs> yeah. right i need somebody like no i want blue like mm. <laughs> that's mm. not red you yeah. know like yeah. it, it, and why right yeah. now, now now i need the brain mm. why do you want blue mm. okay now I, I might be the boss i might end up picking red yeah. but i want to hear every damn reason you want blue okay yeah. and and then and, and and then it's up to me whether i pick it or not yeah right but yeah. i want to hear it this is two things we have in common. If I was to say there's a trait that you and I really, really share in common that we do well. By the way, we both have things we don't do very well. But what we do, <laughs> like that, you know, golf sometimes. But, um, <laughs> but actually, what we both do well is we ended up in our lives becoming self-aware enough to know the things we were good at. And we've spent most of our business lives and personal lives playing to those strengths. And not that's why we're relatively young men that have had some real success because – I haven't wasted a bunch of time trying to get really good at things I'm just not good at doing. And the other thing that we have in common, you're really good at that, Mo. The other thing we have in common is that um, I don't have to be right all the time. If right. someone is smarter than me in a meeting or a decision, I will defer. My ego can get too big, I'm sure, but it's not too big. The, doing it right is better than it being my idea right. in business all the time. And I think you're really, really good at that, too. And by the way, not being right all the time is potentially even more important in your relationships. How do you mean? Boyfriend, wife, mm-hmm. girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You know, you, 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 you don't, you know, I, I see so many friends of mine and they fight with their wives, they fight with their husbands, they fight with their boyfriend, girlfriend, and, and, and they're really fighting just because they need to be right. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you can learn that you just don't always have to be right, mm-hmm. you know, it could go a long way in your relationship. It's really, really true. <laughs> I do that with Christiana a lot of the times. I'll say, hey, listen, um, I don't need to win this. Right. This is not about me winning and you losing, or me right and you wrong. Sometimes it's just like we can even agree to disagree, or I'll just take your idea and we'll go with it a lot of the time because life's pretty damn short. At the end of your life, you're like, man, I won 11 of 12 fights with my wife. Yeah. There's no <laughs> – the scoreboard doesn't matter in this stuff at all, yet we we do it – by the way, we do it even in negotiations and deals too. Yeah. I'm sure you've had that even in escrows where they're going the wrong way. You're like, no, I'm right. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter if you're right. What matters is the deal gets closed, right? Yeah. And you got to be able to defer when you do it. Yeah. You've had a glimpse into – the most successful financially successfully financially successful people in the world and famous people in the world let us in a little bit 
tell us whether or not those people are any happier than, like, say, your mom and dad when you were growing up, or people that you and I both know that don't have financial means or success. Is there a? Do you see any correlation in happier? Are they happier, less happy, um, more that stress, is a less stress? Great question, and you know, it's it's uh, there's no there's no straight up answer to that. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's different. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell you that successful people have an easier time. You know, they have the means to be happy. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make them happy, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? The, the, your mindset, your life, your way of being, you know, the way you look at life, that makes you happy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but having the money and having success and having, you know, um, a beautiful house and ability to jump your plane, all of that stuff, mm-hmm. um, it makes it probably a little easier yeah. to set your mindset up, right? You, yep. you also probably have the ability, if you have money, to have coaches that can coach you in mindset. They have the ability to have, mm-hmm. um, you know, to hire, yeah. you know, people to help you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, where if you don't have that, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't make you unhappy, mm-hmm. um, but you just have less means mm-hmm. to, um, you know, to, to, you have to work harder yourself. Yeah. By the same token, you have less distractions, so there are a lot of people that can, you know, that, you know, love to go, you know, and by the way, what does that money mean, right? Like to somebody with, you know, a $350,000 job, right? Like that could be, that that's money, mm-hmm. right? Sure. They don't need to have $10 million, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, they can live great on that, yeah. have a simple life, have mm-hmm. a nice, you know, mm-hmm. a, 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 and, and be super happy, surf every morning. <laughs> yep. Right? You and I have friends that are doing just that. Yep. And they're super duper happy, yep. right? So so to me, the, the, the you know, you, suffering is hard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, having a job, you, you, you could be happy at any stage, but but and, and you can be unhappy at any stage. I have seen some really miserable billionaires, Me too. really miserable billionaires, uh, that have absolutely everything, yep. and have absolutely nothing going on in their life. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. and I have seen some valet parkers yeah. that are thrilled to be alive. You're right. Yeah, it's interesting that I just today when we're recording this, um, I just had this show come out with this study that was done at Harvard. It's an 85-year-long study, dude, and they studied 2,000 young men. A 1,000 of them were Harvard uh, sophomores from probably pretty privileged backgrounds, wealth, abundance, most of them, and then another 1,000 of boys from like broken, underprivileged families in Boston. Poverty. Mm -hmm. They studied them their entire life, like everything about them, not just like surveys, like in-home meetings, brain scans, MRIs, talk with their kids. And there is a correlation to exactly what you just said, which is that there's no correlation between massive wealth and and happiness, but there is a correlation if you can't have your needs met. If you can't meet your needs and pay your bills and eat decently and have a nice place to live and take care of your family and need in emergencies, that suffering does cause a lack of happiness. But the massive abundance doesn't necessarily do it. So what you've seen in your laboratory of your life is really true. How about this? Any through lines on financially successful people? Because I've met, it's really hard for me. I'll meet somebody that's like, man, what does that guy have in common with that lady who's also wealthy? And I've had a hard time like taking away, like, what do they have in common? I think what I've seen is there's a level of confidence in their chosen craft that might separate them. But has there been a difference that you've observed in financially abundant people? a through line with them in personality traits or behaviors they have that help them generate that wealth as opposed to those that don't. A hundred percent. And let's throw away the, the lucky sperm club, okay. right? Let's yeah. throw away right. the, 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 inheritance. The, the inheritance money, yes. right? Um, and let's just talk about the wealthy, you know, people that have self-made, okay. right? To me, they have, there's a couple of characteristic traits that are, that are there okay. um, that make them, okay. that are core traits. Um, competitive. Yes, needing big... to win, right? Like mm-hmm. that to me is a super a great trait that is a, a common trait amongst people. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's there's one trait that there, I've seen a lot of wealthy, successful people that I happen to think is a bad trait. Okay, okay, greed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and 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 like to be, let's just start with those two, right? Okay. Like. Okay. There's a lot of greedy, wealthy people out there, and they're greedy because um, they, they need a lot of money, and they just want money, and they want money, and they want money. And they keep bringing it in, right? Mm-hmm. But but their decisions that they make in life 
are made from 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 greed mm-hmm. and therefore you know you know the people that work for greedy people are generally not as happy as people that work for competitive people. Really true. <laughs> Man, okay. very true. Right? Uh, yeah. Um, it could be a huge company. They could mm-hmm. be kicking some ass. They could mm-hmm. be making all the money in the world, but all their employees have a terrible culture. They have a terrible, you know, they f- hate it, right? Yeah. Like they're making money, yeah. but they're not happy people, right. right? Or you can work at a company where the culture is, uh, you know, amazing mm-hmm. and, you know, you're, you're the, the, the head guys, you know, I, I, so, so to me those are two traits that, that you know. And the other trait, that makes um, that that seems to be a common trait, and you said it, and and you said it, and I have it. Uh, is fear. You do have it too. We, I definitely have it. Okay. I forgot. I meant to go back to that. Okay. Um, that fear is a very common trait. The fear of having a house over your you know head. Yeah. You know, the fear of being able to provide for your family and your kids. The fear of putting food on the table the next day. The fear, you know, like all of that, right? Mm-hmm. And particularly if you've had it and lost it. Yes. Right. You've had the bankruptcy. You've had the whole thing, and then you rebuild again. And then it's like, and you, and when you're an entrepreneur, you put everything at risk because yeah. that's what an entrepreneur does, right? And so there's the ups and there's downs and there's that. But that's the commonality that just continues to to bring you back, right? Mm. Um, and then hopefully keeping it. <laughs> okay, that surprises me about you because I'm a very fear driven person. I've leveraged fear all of my life. I mean, I think the way I got wealthy was I didn't. I don't even know that I wanted to be wealthy. I think I was afraid of being poor. Yeah. And then even at this stage, I still leverage fear on myself pretty regularly. But I think you can almost see that on me. I'm a pretty intense, wound up dude a lot of the time. Whereas you, it seems like it's bubble gums and rainbows most of the time when I'm around you because you're so positive. Even this thing, story you tell in the book where you come home and Kyle says, how was your day? And you, you're like, it was the greatest day of my life. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's this mindset of yours. So... How do you nuance that duality of staying super positive? Because this is really profound stuff that you're saying right here that only really, Mo, like I think I think the thing I admire about you is there's a level of um, genius with so much humility that you're unaware of your genius. Like I actually am not totally sure you know every reason why you've been successful because you have so much humility for a dude with such genius. So how do you know how you nuance like living – in some fear, leveraging it, but at the same time, you're a really positive, optimistic person. A hundred percent. I'm an extremely op, uh, optimistic, uh, super positive guy. Yeah. Um, but I can also tell you, you know, I had kids, um, you know, very young, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when I married Kyle and I met Kyle, I already had a five-year-old daughter, yeah. right? And I was 25 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I had Alexia at 26, um, you know, I had Farah, you know, so I had three kids before I was 30. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that I, I, I'm, I definitely have kind of that, um, old world lifestyle where, you know, I'm, I'm a man and I need to provide for my family mm-hmm. and I need to, you know, like I am the provider, even though I wanted to make sure, you know, Kyle that made every decision in her life. Right. I never mm-hmm. wanted to hold her back. Mm-hmm. She made money. If she did stuff like that was just extra. Right, like that was great, right? (laughs) You know, but I never wanted to have that be her pressure. Mm -hmm. I needed to be the provider, Mm -hmm. and so, you know, because I was so young with kids, I definitely, you know, and 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 again, I was, you know, I was borrowing money from my grandfather, from Kyle's mom, from my father, you know, in order to keep a roof over my head, right, Mm -hmm. and in order to keep a roof over my my kids' heads, and and to give them, you know, a perceived good life, so that I can, you know, you know, make them feel confident and all of that stuff, and. And so because of that, and I developed a fear of, of losing, mm-hmm. which also, despite all the risks I've taken, despite all the things I've done, I can tell you that I've, had so, I've been so conservative on so many investments mm-hmm. that I've probably have left a lot of money on the table, yeah. okay? Yeah, me too. Um, because I haven't been willing to take that risk. Yeah. So I, I have that fear. Me too. I'm just I, I'm too. just a positive son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, by the way, me too. By the way, I think sometimes guys like us are the ones that remain wealthy though when they get there, and I have that risk aversion too. It's yeah. so interesting how similar we are on this stuff. Now you said a good life. We don't have that much more time. One of my favorite conversations ever is today, because I get to see this side of you that that I know, but it's being revealed, and then the rest of the world figures out. Oh, that's how this dude did this. That's how I could do it. And success leaves clues. And Mo wrote a lot of the clues in this book of how to become successful. But you said the good life. So let's just be real. You've had, you've built a company that's really big and really successful. 
you have had notoriety and fame. You have an unbelievable relationship with your daughters. You got a really, you do have good friendships. But at this stage of your life, he loves to go to Aspen. He loves Aspen, right? He loves to golf. Mo likes nice stuff. Trust me, too. Okay. <laughs> what what is a good life to you now? Like if you went back and you could go, Mauricio, the the twenty one year old. This is what will make you a good life. Would it be the one that this turned out to be? Would there would it be would it be different? And at this stage, what is that to you? So I could tell you that if when I go back and I look at it, um, I had a I've had a good life. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a great life. It's had its challenges. It's had its ups and its downs. Mm-hmm. I've had money. I've lost money. Mm-hmm. I've had nothing. Um, I wouldn't trade any of it, like any of those experiences. You know, working mm-hmm. in a kibbutz for a year. I mean, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, I think about it all the time. You know, going to today. Um, you know, grinding and working, and it goes back to balance. Like, I just got back from Aspen. I was there for four days. I didn't look at an email. I didn't answer a phone call. Like, I, I, I erased it. I had fun. I was with my friends. We had a great time. Like, I did not, like, do any work. I legitimately did not do any work, okay? Um, but when I look at my day-to-day, today, my favorite thing to do is to grow the agency mm-hmm. and to grow the brand and to grow this baby that I've created Mm -hmm. and and i don't mean that in a bad way it's actually my favorite thing to do it's actually a game right like Mm -hmm. i love golf yes can i play golf five days a week no okay Mm -hmm. um 365 days a year no i can't i'm not i cannot do that can i play golf 40 days a year absolutely okay (laughs) can i ski 40 days a year absolutely Mm -hmm. can i do all that 365 days a year Mm -hmm. no chance in hell (laughs) (laughs) right right i go bananas yeah so okay Um, and so to me, a part of that good life is, is, is to having something to do, like building something, creating something like mm-hmm. that's exciting. Those challenges, you know, the challenges that I'm faced with every day, that's fun. Yeah. I have fun with those challenges. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was on a phone call this morning with, you know, some of my global partners and they were, you know, you're giving me shit about, mm-hmm. you know, stuff that the company, you know, has, has scaled back on because of this recession and stuff that, you know, I'm, I'm scaling back and mm-hmm. I'm actually, you know, reducing expenses and being I was getting smart. shit, right? Mm-hmm. I'm being smart. Yeah. And they were talking to me about this thing, mm-hmm. right? And I'm thinking to myself, you know, like, all right, like, this is great. Like, yes, they're upset and yes, they want more, but it gives me, a, it challenges me to but not, not, not to spend more money, but to make a more efficient company. I need to make the engine more efficient. I need to make it run on four cylinders and still be able to, uh, you know, re- rev at, you know, 7,000 RPM, red line at 7,000 RPM. Like, mm-hmm. that's the engine I need to build right now, mm-hmm. right? I don't mm-hmm. have the luxury of having a 12-cylinder car, right. you know. Right, uh, right. So it's exciting. Yeah. That's fun times. That's yeah. fun shit for me. Yeah, it is. I can see it on your face. <laughs> I think, like, having a life of – I tried that for a little while. Most people don't know that about me. Many, many years ago, I had enough exits and different stuff happen. I'm like – I'm going to start playing a lot of golf, like a lot of golf. And I was miserable because I love golf, but I was miserable. It's not something that would sustain me every single day. I think one of the reasons I love golf is it's a break from the mental stuff I do otherwise that means something to me. Yeah, It's the camaraderie. It's the friendships. It's the competition, to your point earlier. It's an outlet from the other things. But the thing that brings me the most joy is my faith, my family, and doing meaningful work feeling like what I'm doing has a purpose to it Damn and I'm contr- making a dent in my universe or the universe to some extent. So, well, I just want to say that conversely to the compliments that you've paid me today and mm-hmm. you know, having me on your show and getting to know me like this, I can tell you that again, I've been your friend for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And when you came to the agency and the forum and you delivered, you know, your, you know, closing speech, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to all of us, mm-hmm. Um, that I saw a side of you that was, you know, extraordinary to me. Thank you. And uh, and and it made me feel a lot closer to you as well. Thank you, brother. And I can tell you that you touched all of us. Every every single person at that in my company still talks about it all the time. Thanks, and man. Um, I just love you for that. I so love I'm you. So I'm so glad to you. be here. I'm so glad that you invited me, and I'm so glad we had that experience. All right, last question, by the way, before I tell everybody again about the deal maker, go get Mauricio's book. Listen, it's going to tell you how to build a better business, a better life, how to be able to sell better. Um, there's just stuff in here that you're only going to learn from someone who's actually done these things. That's the whole deal. It's not theory. It's actually stories and practical stuff that he's applied in his life. So last thing, tough question. I've asked you a lot of hard stuff today. You just crushed this. So if you were to meet somebody, well, maybe they do this at the agency. Someone will come up to you that's new and says, look, I got a dream. I want to build my dream. And I don't come from a family that's done this before, just like you hadn't. I certainly haven't. 
and they just said, I just like, I don't know where to begin. Like I, I, you know, I've got my real estate license or I've got my insurance license or I've got this idea for a business or, you know, but I don't know really what to do to generate momentum. This is the hardest thing for someone who's climbed really high because you got to go all the way back to that first step. So when I even get asked it, sometimes I'm like, all right, let me put myself back there again mentally. What would you say to somebody? They come up to you at a Starbucks, like Mauricio Yamansky, oh my gosh, I have this dream. Can I get your advice for a minute? I want to start to build my dream life. What would be the steps you'd tell them to begin with? Well, it's you said it's it's one of the hardest questions you get, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and I can tell you, you know, in order to really help somebody, um, you know, you can't answer that question in in in, in a minute or sure. in three minutes, sure. right? Sure. And so what I always tell my real estate agents that you know come to me and the people that work for me is I go, okay, I want you to go back. You know, what do you do? Mm-hmm. What you know? What do you do to be successful? What do you do in your life? What you know? How do you wake up? What do you wake up in the morning? What do you do? I go through the whole like mm-hmm. I got to get to know the person, yep. right? Um, and then eventually you can, you know, start breaking it down and starting yep. to give, you know, some real advice. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, but if somebody just comes out of the blue and it's like, Hey, like, yep. how do I, you yeah. know, yep. you know, how do I be you? Yep. Right. Like, right. first of all, I always tell them, don't be me, be you. It's a great advice. Okay. Yes. Like yep. you cannot be anybody else. Yep. Go find yourself and be you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but the first thing I say to them is find your passion. Yeah. What are you passionate? Are you doing? Are you getting into a business that you're passionate about? And mm-hmm. if you're not, and it just happens to be the business that you're getting into, mm-hmm. then find the passion in the business. Yes, that's right. Because you can find it. Yes, find the thing in your business. Like I didn't love certain parts of the financial business, but I found the parts I did love, and I man, I went nuts on those. Yeah, y- you can't love every. Like not everybody's gonna love everything, right? right. It's just. <laughs> Possible, right. Right? right, people think that like I love everything about my. You don't love everything no, about real estate, no. Right? But right. find the passion that yeah. drives you there, and, yeah. and you need, and then you need to wake up, and then you need to have the, and then and, 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 and it's it's and it's you. You need to have the mindset. Mm-hmm. You need to set yourself up for success. Mm-hmm. You need to be. You need to be successful as a human being before you can be successful in life. Wow. In business. Wow. Really. really I can't believe how good today was. So good. Dude, like I'm just going to tell you, this is going to get shared all over the planet. Like when I look back in at the producers and they're like nodding and smiling, that's always my validation because <laughs> they hear everything and every single show. Bro, you're just extraordinary. And um, I love you. I'm very, very proud of you. And I'm also grateful you took the time to write this book because I know hard it, how hard it is to write a book. And then I know how nerve wracking it is to put it out too. Like, oh my gosh. And I can just tell you, man, this book's going to go ballistic not only because you're so well known but because the caliber of the book because you don't want just the people that you know to buy the book that know you but to tell other people to get it and that's why i wanted you on the show today hey guys go get this book go get the deal maker by mauricio yamansky and please share this episode with as many people as you possibly can that want to know anything more about becoming successful we just had a master class conversation with a, with a guy that's in the midst of doing it. This isn't a career in review. This is in a guy in the midst of still doing these things every single day. I love you, Mo. Thanks for I being here. I love you, Ed. Thank you. Okay, guys, God bless you. Share the show. Max out your life. 